So the CDC has put out its numbers, its birth rate numbers, and different um, news outlets have picked up the story. So this one is from Forbes. The U.S. birth rate drops to new low after pandemic baby bump. So right after the pandemic, it was a slight bump. It wasn't the baby boom that they were hoping for. So let's get into this article from Forbes. U.S. fertility rates in 2023 reached the lowest levels since records began, the CDC reported on Thursday, returning to a long-standing trend of Americans having fewer babies after the temporary uplift during the COVID-19 pandemic as concerns grow over reproductive health care. Key facts. There were just under 3.6 million babies born in the United States in 2023. According to the data released by the CDC, um, a drop of 2% from the year before. The data is based on 99% of the birth certificates issued that year and is broadly in line with a general annual decline of roughly 2% over the last decade, a steady drop punctuated by only a steep plunge of 4%, steep plunge of 4% at the start of the pandemic, followed by a modest expectation-defying pandemic baby bump. The birth rate for women of the childbearing age, a category covering females ages 14, I mean 15 to 44, was 54.4 births per 1,000, the CDC reported, and that was down 3% from 2022. NCH, NCHS demographer Brady Hamilton, the report's lead author, said the rate is the lowest since the center started compiling data on new births, following below the previous low of around 56 births per thousand in 2020. Teen pregnancies also hit a new record low last year with 13.2 births for every thousand teens uh, 15 to 19, though the drop of 3% was smaller than the average decline of 7% a, um, a year from 2007 to 2022, the report said, without offering an explanation for the fall or the flattening rate. Here's the graph from the CDC of what teenage pregnancies look like from 1991 to 2023. So it's been a steady decline and it's breaking it down um, ages 15 to 17, 15 to 19, and 18 to 19. So it's been a steady decline, but it's still, you know, teenagers are still obviously having kids. So it's not going to get to a complete zero from teenagers, but the decline is there. The rate of C-sections, which now account for almost a third of all deliveries, was at 32.4. That increased the fourth consecutive year, the CDC reported, the highest rate since 2012, with rates for, um, the rates are highest for Black mothers at 37%. So this is a surprising fact, and I would say that this is not particularly surprising. It says the U.S. fertility rate for 2023 is well below the threshold that demographers call the replacement rate. This is the fertility rate needed for the current generation to replace itself rather than grow or shrink. The CDC puts this threshold at 2,100 births per thousand women. The U.S. has generally been below the replacement rate since 1971, consistently below the replacement rate since 2007. So I don't know why that is a surprising fact, because we've been well below replacement for a while. Key background, while U.S. births have been in a broad decline for decades, this continued decline comes at a time of growing concern over access to reproductive health care, an intensely politicized debate over some abortion access, as well as concerns over the economy, a lack of rights for working parents, and growing fears over the future of the planet. The U.S. is not alone and experience a, demo, um, a demographic change, and changing birth rates are set to drive major global shifts in power over the coming decades. The continued failure to meet replacement rates thresholds around the world is of growing concern to many policymakers, scientists, and officials. Many countries like China and Japan have been trying to encourage people to have more kids and a, and a birth rate below the replacement rate signals major demographic shifts on the horizon. In particular, it portends sluggish growth, an aging population, and an economy that one day may struggle to find enough workers to fill jobs and pay taxes required to maintain the state and care for a large elderly population whose health and other needs often require far more expenditure per capita than younger people. Now, 
with all of that said, these numbers are going to continue to plummet. So this was the article from Axios. This is what it looks like when it's graphed as far as what the fertility rate looks like. And right now, we are sitting at 1.62 in our country. I, I put a little blue arrow um, at the year before because that was where there was a slight uptick, but it dropped right back down. And now keep in mind, these were last year's numbers, 2023. And so this year, we have been talking about 4B women opting out of having more kids. The child-free movement is still out and going strong. And so these numbers are going to continue to drop, especially since, like it was saying over in Forbes, the highly politicized um, United States right now, different states are basically, you know, pushing women to stay celibate. They are letting women know that if you have kids, we're not going to save you. If you are going to the emergency room, we are not, we don't have to take care of you. They are literally arguing, Idaho is literally arguing to the Supreme Court that um, women that might need an emergency saving some abortion can be denied. Um, we have already seen articles where um, women reached an emergency room and doctors wouldn't help them. They actually had to miscarry out in the parking lot. Women are facing these types of things. So is, is it any wonder that the, that the um, fertility rate, that the birth rate is plummeting? So I went to the CDC's website and they have all of the numbers listed out for 2022 and 2023. And this is where you can see um, that at 2022, it was over 3.6 million births. Um, and in 2024, it was slightly under 3. Point, um, it was slightly under 3.6. So that is a change difference of about 70,000 births. But what this also does is break it down by race and ethnicity, who had babies and who did it. So I brought out my pen and paper and I did the math for us. So if you look at all races, there was a drop of 76,430 total births from 2022 to 2023. And so that is about a 2% change overall. So how did these categories, how did the groupings from the CDC work out? Um, Native American women, they saw a drop of just over 1,200 births. That was a fall of 5%. Black women, black women, y'all, we, we did it. We dropped, the birth rate dropped from 2023 to 20, I mean, 2022 to 2023 by over 20,000 births. That was a 4% drop from the year before. So, you know, people might think that we're out here having a bunch of babies, no. Women, black women's birth rate is falling as well. White women had over, almost 57,000 less births, but they had more births than everybody else. Um, so their percentage was just a 3% decline. Asian women had um, 30, oh, almost 3,400 um, less births, and that was a fall of 1.5%. Hispanic women, the Hispanic women grouping had more births, they, they actually increased their births by 6,500. So they were the only grouping that actually had an increase in birth rates. Now, what I plan to do tomorrow, on the CDC's website, they list out how many births per state. So tomorrow, I plan on looking at some of these states that are forced birther states and that had the trigger laws or extra stringent abortion laws. And I'm going to see how their numbers changed from 2022 to 2023. I'm going to pull out some of those numbers and compare and see, you know, if they had a drop or whatever. I don't know. I don't have a theory on it just yet. I just wanted y'all to see these numbers. Um, we just got these numbers. So there's going to be a lot of pontificating on it. But we're, before 4B even hit, these numbers were declining. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens with this year's numbers. Jump in the comments. Let me know what you think. Don't forget to like, comment, and share.